The Visual Studio team's been doing some amazing work with the Parallel Stacks window. Today, we're gonna to see how to use it to see what's going on with threads in an application. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and today we're going to talk about debugging multi-threaded applications using the very cool Parallel Stacks window. And to do that, joining me are Mark and Ram. Hey, guys. Hi there. Thanks for coming on the show to show us this stuff. Um, give us a, a idea, if you will, about quickly why this is an important feature of Visual Studio, and then we'll see how we use it. What, what's the problem we're solving here? Sure. Um, I think a lot of the things that we uh, as developers do, we tend to kind of debug uh, at the individual line level. So we'll stop, hit a breakpoint, and we'll debug a particular line of code. But there is a class mm -hmm. of problems for multi-threaded applications that kind of sometimes require you to take a step back and see the bigger picture of what your app is doing. That in, might include interactions between threads. Um, and so you may have to marshal or kind of negotiate how exactly you're going to access particular resources when you've got multiple threads. And then, so at that point, you have to understand the relationship between threads. And that's where I think the tool like Parallel Stacks, the one that Rum's been working on, kind of helps you take a step back and see the bigger picture. Now, is a multi-threaded app something that I set out to write or are my apps multi-threaded and I might not even know that? So, so, so when it comes to threading, usually you're very explicit about creating a new thread, but okay. we also kind of use asynchronous programming as well. That's kind sure. of more task-based that allows you to kind of do some of the sophisticated um, type of parallel programming um, without necessarily knowing all the details of how threading works. So um, the parallel stacks window actually allows you to see views of both threads and tasks as well. well that sounds exciting. All right, how's it work? Cool. Well, I, I've got this really cool um, um, demo that I think would be useful for us to kind of talk about this conversation all up. Um, this is actually an open source project. Um, my good friend, Christoph Nassar and his colleague, Kevin Ghost, wrote this application actually years ago to talk about uh, Parallel Stacks window, which is a window we, we have um, here. Um, this particular app is a fairly straightforward application. Um, we have three cats that are buying and selling um, cat paraphernalia, things like catnip and tuna and all the kinds of stuff. And as you can see, it's an app here, and they are kind of trying to replicate a kind of stock market where they're selling and they're putting these orders, and then we have a transaction history of the orders being sent through. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the application. And you see Garfield started to sell a bunch of boxes and tuna, and you see the transactions are starting to fill. Everything's going perfectly and swimmingly. But what we imagine as a developer, I'm thinking if I've got three cats, I probably need three threads to process it. And so all of them are selling and making these orders and hopefully the transaction list. And as you can see, for the last few seconds, it's actually stopped selling and that shouldn't have happened. Hmm. Um, we, we actually should have had continual selling this whole time I'm talking, but as you can see, it's stopped. And what we can do with Visual Studio is help you in a multi-threaded scenario. And that's where I think the power of Parallel Stacks really shines. Let me kind of show you what I mean. Cool. So I'm, I'm gonna pause the debugger and then you can do that over here by hovering over the pause. It's a control alt break if you wanna know the shortcut. And I'm gonna pause the debugger. And now I'm actually stopped, right? So traditionally when I wanna know about the threads, there's a drop down right here that I can list all the threads associated with the application. As you can see, there's quite a big list. Now I could literally go into each of these threads. You can see Cat Felix is a thread on 20744 right here. I could go into each of those, but I'm not gonna do that because that would take too much time. That'd be um, a better way. Yeah, exactly. This is where I think the parallel of parallel stacks comes in. Um, probably what most developers would do at this point is probably call up the call stack. Um, and actually, this is some of the stuff, really cool stuff that Ram's been doing already. Um, you can see um, it's actually in this call stack. It's referencing that it's waiting on a lock owned by th a different thread, thread 31648. And that's not usually a bad thing, but the, but the line above it is actually a known bad situation in this mm. call stack. 
So my code has said line 65, we're going here, line 145, and it's waiting right here, right? So this is essentially waiting, but this deadlock is saying, I can't go any further. In fact, a deadlock is, it's never gonna recover, ever. It's going to sit here in this deadlock. And so that paused kind of transactions you saw from Garfield and, and so on and so forth, and never going to recover. And so it's important for us to kind of debug what this is, what's going on here. So there is a new way to get to the parallel stacks window that I really want you all to see here. It's the view all threads here. And you can get to that by hitting control shift and DS. So I'm gonna click that and my, and my um, parallel stacks window is open up here. Cool. Let me kind of widen this out so you can get a good view. Like this is the parallel stacks window down the bottom right here, depending on how many threads you have, you will see the kind of really big picture. Remember, in some scenarios in production, you can see hundreds or even thousands of these threads. And so using this drop down is not going to be practical here. But this gives you a visual represent representation of your threads. And I'm going to explain just a part of that right here. So on this left side, this you see this blue outline. That's actually me um, showing you um, that there's 45 threads involved along here. And it starts off with clear expired order. And it goes on to this left-hand side and says 44 of the threads are waiting on thread 31648. We are in a deadlock situation with 44 of our threads and never going to recover. And so now, I'd, I know now that it's not just a single thread that's involved in this deadlock. Parallel Stacks is inviting me to look at the entire, um, the entire process and all the threads running underneath this process. So my job as a developer now is to understand why I have a deadlock, but I don't necessarily, I won't, wouldn't be able to understand that if I didn't kind of have this big picture view. I hope that makes sense. That's cool. Now you say this is a new feature. It's new in... 2022, 2022, 17, five. So we've actually, uh, Ram's been doing some fa fantastic work. We've had this feat parallel stacks for a while, um, but we've been perfecting it really over the last uh, couple of releases. 17, um, this latest preview that's right now, that's out right now has all, has has most of the features we're showing today. This yeah. is actually, an, we're actually giving you insider look today because this is actually mm. an internal build. You can kind of tell by the top right side. Uh -huh. We're showing you all the latest bits. Um, we're excited about them. We want people to be aware of them as quickly as possible. Okay. Cool. So we have a deadlock, but I still am no closer to figuring out how yeah, exactly. I know there's a problem, but where? Why? Exactly. Do exactly. How do I get a bit closer to this, right? Um, I'm going to show you here how I would approach this problem. One of the ways I would approach this problem um, uh, from the parallel hey, stack perspective. Uh, just, just like taking a step back also, yeah. um, you know, so for, you know, just to maybe clarify what folks may actually be looking at. Uh, so these are actually the call stacks of all the threads that are in the process, right? Great point. We take all the, the call stacks of each thread and we kind of start grouping them together. And that's the view that you're seeing right here, yeah. right? So um, each node is kind of a, a fragment of a call stack, like whatever is common, we start smushing it together and so that's uh, kind of the view that we see. And mm -hmm. if you can see that there's a kind of a blue outline on the uh, on a couple of nodes on the left, and that means that that's uh, those nodes contain the current call stacks. For example, if you go to the debug location toolbar on the top, it says that the current thread is three one one four zero, right? And uh, similarly, now if you were to hover over the nodes, like forty five threads and forty four threads, that means our current thread 31140 is one of the 45 threads. Uh, yeah, if you scroll down, yeah, you should see there that right there. Yeah, uh, it's one of those, and it's one of the 44 threads above. So this is just kind of a a bird's eye view of you know everything that's going on in your process. So yeah, I just wanted to uh, you know yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. that's a perfect yeah. point. There's 45 threads here that have the exact same call stack, doing the exact same thing. For example, if I were if to, if this were to a web app, for example, and maybe I have thousands of users coming in, um, making an order at my site, 
I may see similar things, right? I may see thousands of these threads. We kind of categorize those threads really conveniently for you to look at. That way, you don't have to, as a developer, go to each, switch between each thread, try to figure out where, where it sits in the context of your app. Parallel Stacks is the big picture view you want to start looking at these types of problems, these multi-threaded problems with. And then you yeah. kind of drill down, and that's kind of the next step. Let's kind of drill down into this problem a bit more here. And you could also just compare the call stack window and the parallel stacks window. Like it's pretty much, uh, you know, you can just see that they are, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's just oh, yeah, uh, you know, kind of grouped into. So let's yeah. raise this up a little bit. Yeah. And this is the call stack of the thread that's currently the blue outline. Okay. okay. And that represents, you can see line 65, line 145. That's the same as the bottom node. And it's exactly the same thing. So it's showing me, this is showing me a specific call stack. And this is showing, the parallel stacks window is showing me where this call stacks sits within the entire process and its relationship to other stacks as well. All right. And then <clears throat> from there, we can go to the lines of code that are causing the problem, right? Exactly that. Yep. So, so let's actually look, look at what it's saying. This is waiting on a lock owned by thread 31648. We can actually click to that, double clicking on this. And it's saying we have a waiting on a lock owned by thread 3458. First, let's think about what a lock is, right? So let's say, for example, I am I have three threads running in my application and the three threads need to update a file. First, I need to <clears throat> lock. All three threads can't access that file at the same time. Right, so what we need to do is a locking mechanism allows you to make sure that all three threads wait their turn. Only the only the thread that owns the lock can do the writing, right? So everybody else is waiting. So that call stack is basically letting you know every time you see a wait, it's somebody waiting their turn. So all these threads are waiting their turn behind this deadlock, which we know now will never recover, uh, right? So a deadlock is basically where thread A is waiting on a resource that's thread B owns. Simultaneously, thread B is waking, waiting on a resource that's owned by thread A. They will never get out of this situation. So this app will never get these 44 threads back ever, right? So, right. so now, I, now, now I know um, if I look at this, I need to, to kind of get to the code. And here on the left-hand side, I've got my code alongside my parallel stacks window. And you can see here, I've got a lock on orders and then a lock on sellers, right? And my, my job is to kind of find the other side of that lock, is to find the other side of this deadlock. Uh, so 31648 is waiting on 3458. So the other side, I am locking seller. I've locked seller and I'm waiting for the lock on order. If you if if you can kind of think that through, um, both sides are waiting on a lock that the other side owns. This is a traditional deadlock. You will never recover. You have to restart your application. And what we've seen with the code now is basically I need the locking order to be in the same order on both sides. So on one uh, side I'm doing seller then order. On the other side I'm doing order then seller. That cross match allows me to get in this deadlock situation. I need to change the order of my lockings. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. so, so from a code perspective, from a workflow perspective of trying to figure out these kinds of problems, we start from the big picture. We start from the, what are the threads doing? Are they deadlocked? Are they busy? Are they waiting? What are they waiting on? Parallel stacks get you that big picture view, right? Then when you get that big picture view, you find the interesting threads that you want to track down. Right, so I found out that this thread is deadlocked with this one, and I switch between them. I get to see actually lines of code. My like kind of last step is lines of code. A great support engineer a few months back showed me that kind of principle. We start with the big picture, whether it's memory, whether it's threading, and then you kind of whittle your way back down to code to kind of figure out what you want, how you want to fix it. And this is the kind of situation where you could have stared at this code for hours, not understanding, not really knowing that the problem is a specific deadlock. Yeah. Kind of thing that you might eventually the next day call me over and I'd say, hey, you, these aren't in the same order. 
Exactly. <laughs> this happens all the time. Now exactly. you literally see that there's a deadlock, which now focuses you on looking at the locks. Why are the lock? Why are we deadlocked? And then that could save you hours. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're, we're thinking about the ways in which we can kind of help you yeah. make you realize what's going on. Like one of the other things here, just to kind of bring your attention again, the X is the informational waiting on locks are might actually be completely benign, right? You may be waiting on a lot, just waiting your turn. Um, so that might actually just be a normal situation, but the deadlock kind of is telling you, hey, this, you're not just waiting, you're waiting, going to be waiting forever. Right. So this is a, yeah, these indicators are helpful. Well, that is really, really cool. I'm, I'm totally enjoying all the enhancements to the parallel stacks window. Thanks for showing us this. Can I just show a couple more things here just to, before we round out? Sure. Okay, here on the parallel stacks window, okay, um, you actually, now I'm focused on my code, and that's usually most of the case when I'm debugging, but you actually can switch to show external code, meaning this is going to show framework code as well. Oh. And it's going to show everything in context with the framework code and how it got to this particular position. Um, it's showing you, you know, some of the thread pool, a thread, how that kind of gets instantiated and where these threads are going. Um, I can also have a toggle that shows me the method view. So again, I can kind of focus on the methods that are called as part of my thread, rather than think about this um, at every single frame, I can think about this as a method view. And so you can see that I'm, I'm in clear expired orders right mm -hmm. here. I really think that's a helpful thing. Yeah, that's cool. Also, if we go back to show external here, I can select um, uh, I can select nodes that I might want to um, that I might want to share, and I can copy that information out into a notepad and share which kind of call stacks. The call stacks themselves are useful as part of my debugging. So um, I might want to copy and share the call stacks to a note file. Maybe I'm creating a bug and I want to copy the data of the call stacks. I can literally copy that out, copy that into a notepad mm -hmm. and kind of share that. And finally, I also have the opportunity to save a diagram of my oh, call nice. stacks. So I can literally save a, a file um, in the PAG format, and that kind of shows literally a, a image of my entire session here. That's useful usually when I'm in a part of a session with my team and I'm trying to share and communicate details about the parallel stacks. Uh, Raman, I'm, I'm missing any of any other features that we want to share here before we move on? Yeah, I know. I think these are kind of the main things. Uh, the method view is quite helpful in showing a kind of a caller callie relationship. You know, if you want a um, Typically, the parallel stacks might have a lot of stacks, and you want to kind of focus on you know, your method, which is interesting to you. You can select that, toggle to the method view, which will show the entire stacks from the point of view of that method that is selected. So it's quite helpful in uh, you know kind of uh, trimming the stack to a subset of uh, frames that you're interested in. And yeah, awesome. You can also oh sorry. Now go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can also uh, kind of select an entire stack by just double clicking a node. Uh, like you can double click uh, in the regular view. Uh, you can just double click. Uh, Mark, if you could probably just bring that up. Um, yeah. So, uh, so you can, you can get out of the method. Yeah. So you can just uh, double click one of the nodes on the top, the node headers on the top, and that will select the entire stack. And then you can control C and, uh, you know, paste it to an email or uh, in some kind of chat. Uh, so it just makes for an easy way of selecting an entire stack. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. So this has been awesome. Thank you so much. Now I did see that if you click the in view, it says threads now, but there was a second choice in there, right? Yeah. Tab. Let's cover that in our next episode. Cool. What do you think? Yep, sounds good. Great. Love All to. All right. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Stick around for the next episode where we'll look at tasks. We will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.